today I'm going to show you how to knit a Harry Potter scarf, or more accurately, a Hogwarts house scarf. This is a great pattern for beginner knitters because the pattern consists entirely of the knit and purl stitch and gives you an opportunity to practice switching colors. So according to fan forums, scarves with two smaller stripes of color are actually for older students at Hogwarts, while scarves with larger blocks of colors are reserved for first years. Now I'm no Harry Potter scholar, so if there's more nuance I'm missing, then let me know in the comments. This video includes chapters with timestamps to help you navigate through this video. So grab the free pattern in the link in the description and follow along. If you'd like to support this channel, please consider buying a beautiful PDF file of this pattern. It's totally optional, but I always appreciate your support. For the price of a butterbeer from the Hogshead, it helps to keep this channel running. Who should knit this scarf? Before you start this pattern, you should be comfortable casting on, knitting, purling, and casting off. Basically the four steps of knitting. In this video, you'll learn how to slip a selvage stitch, how to join a new color into your knitting, how to minimize the number of ends to weave in, how to weave in those remaining ends, and how to make a neat and even fringe should you choose to do so. Okay, next let's talk materials. For this scarf, I used two balls of Paintbox acrylic yarn in the color Red Wine and one ball of Paintbox acrylic yarn in the color Mustard. I also used four millimeter knitting needles, a tapestry needle, and a pair of scissors. I'll throw links to the materials down in the description. Next, we're ready to cast on. All right, so now let's start our scarf. We are going to start by casting on 47 stitches. So I assume that you know how to cast on. If you don't, you can check out one of these videos here that I've linked. I'm going to use the long tail cast on because that is my preferred default cast on. You can use any cast on you like, long tail, cable cast on, stretchy cast on. Just go ahead and cast on 47 stitches or you can cast on any odd number of stitches or 47 if you want to follow this pattern exactly. So now I've got 47 stitches casted onto my needle and now we can start knitting our scarf. All right, so the scarf is actually just made of two rows, row one and row two. So let's work row one together. So row one says we're going to slip one knitwise. Now this is very simple. All it means is that we are going to push our right needle into the first stitch, just like this, as if we were going to knit that stitch. So normally when you knit, you would go in your, knee, in your stitch like this, right? And then wrap your yarn around. Now we're not actually going to knit the first stitch. Instead, we're just going to push our needle in as if we were going to knit and then slip it right off of our needle, not too violently like I just did, but just slip it right off the needle, okay? And that's gonna give us a really nice, neat edge to our scarf. All right, so slip one knitwise, then we're going to purl one. So I'm gonna bring my working yarn to the front, and I'm going to purl my second stitch, just like that, purl, cool. Next, we're going to knit one. So again, we're just gonna push our needle in, knit one. All right, so that is basically it, okay, for row one. We're going to repeat the instructions between the asterisks all over again. So we're going to purl one. Here we go, purl one, and then knit one, all right? So after we have done our slip one knit wise, we're going to work a purl one knit one all the way to the end of the row. All right, so that's all that row one consists of. So go ahead and work your row one. All right, so here's my last stitch and that's a knit one, cool. All right, so I'm gonna turn my work over and if you're eagle-eyed, you'll notice that I did switch my needles. I switched over to a pair of circular needles. Um, I'm not joining in the round though, I'm just knitting flat. Um, they're a little bit more comfortable, so that's why I switched over. Let's work row two. So row two says we're going to slip one purl wise. So what that means is I'm gonna take my right needle and stick it into this stitch as if I were going to purl it. So if I'm gonna purl a stitch, I'm going to bring the yarn to the front, right? Yarn to the front, needle in the back, and then I'll go from the top to the bottom, right? That's how we purl. Normally you would go like this and that's a purl. But we are not purling that first stitch, we're slipping that first stitch, but we're doing it purl wise. So all that means is that we're just going to slip the stitch right off, just like that. Okay, so let's do that again. All right, I'm gonna take my needle, go into the stitch from the top 
to the bottom, right, as if I were going to purl. The yarn is in the front, and then I'm just going to slip the stitch off. So that's what a slip one purl wise is, okay? So our next, uh, next stitch is a knit one. So I'm gonna bring my yarn to the back because we are going to knit, and then I'm just going to knit into it, all right? So that's my knit one. The next stitch is a purl stitch, so we're going to purl, okay? And that is all there is to the repeat for row two. We're just going to knit one and purl one. So when you see those little asterisks in your pattern, it just means that whatever is between the asterisks gets repeated. So in our case for row two, that would be a knit one and a purl one. And that's an instruction that we're going to repeat to the end of the row. Okay, so go ahead and work your knit one, purl one for row two till you get to the end of your row. So once you finish row two, repeat rows one and two, alternating between these two rows until your piece measures four inches from the cast on edge. Next, I've got some tips and notes to make knitting easier for you. When you're first knitting your scarf, it will seem extremely wide, okay? But that's just the nature of one by one rib. It's really stretched out now, but the more you knit it, the more compressed it will be. I actually knit the same scarf on another pair of needles and it ended up being about this wide, okay? So when you first start knitting, it'll seem crazy wide, but as you knit a couple rows, it will shrink to about 5.5 inches. And right now, if I just measure it out after just knitting two rows, it measures eight inches, okay? So don't worry if your knitting seems very wide at the beginning, it'll definitely shrink down. So when you're working row one and row two, you don't actually need to like memorize row one, slip one knit wise, purl one knit one. All you really need to do is remember to knit the knits and purl the purls. So this is a rule of thumb that you can use for any kind of ribbing, okay? One by one, two by two, two by three. Knit the knits and purl the purls once you have worked your first row, which we have already done. All right, so if you see a knit stitch, like this stitch, for example, this is a knit stitch because you can tell by this tiny little V here, this is a knit stitch, you would knit into it, okay? This is a purl stitch, you can tell by this little purl bump here. So if it's a purl stitch, then you would purl into it. This is a knit stitch because of this little V, so you would knit into it, okay? Purl stitch, purl into it. Knit stitch, knit into it. Okay, so you can actually let your knitting tell you what to do. If it's a knit stitch, knit into it. Purl stitch, purl into it. Now you might be wondering, well, what about that first stitch, right, of the row? Do I slip it knitwise or purlwise? The same rule applies. So this first stitch here is a knit stitch. You can tell because of this little V. It's a bit slack right now, but I can tighten it up and you can see that there is a little V shape here. So this first stitch, you would slip it knitwise because it is a knit stitch. If you had a purl stitch as the first stitch, then you would slip it purlwise, okay? So in this way, you can just read your knitting, okay? You don't even really need to refer to the pattern at all. Purl stitch, purl into it. Knit stitch, knit into it. Okay, first stitch is a knit stitch, slip it knitwise, okay? So that's a really easy way to work your one by one rib without looking at your pattern. I'm going to measure my work now. Let's see, and it measures exactly four inches. Cool. All right, so let's look at our pattern. It says, with red yarn, work row one to the last stitch. And then we're gonna introduce the yellow yarn. How exciting! Okay, so we need to work row one. And if I take a look at my knitting right now, I can see that the first stitch here is a knit stitch. And that means that this needs to be uh, row one. Okay, so if I were to pick up my yarn right now and start knitting, I would be knitting a row one. Okay, so I need to do that. So I'm just gonna pick up my work and work row one to the last stitch. All right, so I am near the end of my row one. Here we go. So here's my last stitch. I'm gonna insert my right needle into that stitch and then I'm going to bring the yellow yarn in. Here we go. So what I'm gonna do is just leave like a five or six inch tail and then I'm just going to loop this yellow yarn around my right needle. I'm just holding it like this, and I'm gonna pull that yellow yarn through, 
And now I've attached my yellow yarn to the work. Okay, so my last stitch is knit with the yellow yarn. All right, so let's turn our work over. So the reason why we do this is because we always slip our first stitch, right? So we need our first stitch on this row to be a yellow stitch, okay? So you'll see what I mean as we go along. Next, what we're going to do is we are going to work row two. Now row two starts with a slip one purl wise. So I'm gonna take my needle and just insert it into that first stitch. And you can see I've got both ends of the yellow yarn here, okay? So I've moved both of them up front. And what we're gonna do is actually knit these two strands of yarn as if they were one. And by doing this, we end up weaving this little yarn tail into our knitting. So here we go, here's my right needle. I'm gonna insert it into this first stitch and just slip it off the needle purl-wise as we do for a row two. Then I'm going to bring that yellow yarn to the back of my needle and then do a knit one. Okay, so again, I'm holding the two strands of yellow yarn together. Okay, so next we've got a purl stitch, so I'm going to bring my yarn up front and purl that stitch, holding my two strands of yellow yarn together. Okay, so the next stitch is a knit, so we're gonna knit it. The next stitch is a purl, we're gonna purl it, okay? So at this point, I've knit four stitches. The first one was slipped, so I'm going to knit one more stitch with these two strands of yarn held together. Here we go, there we go, just done a knit stitch. And now this yellow tail end has been woven into these five stitches and I can just get a pair of scissors out and just snip it right off, just like this, boop. So by doing this, we don't need to weave in this yellow yarn tail, we've just done it by knitting with it, okay? So now what we're gonna do is just pick up our one yarn tail of the yellow yarn and continue knitting. Okay, so here's a purl stitch, so I'm gonna purl it. Here's a knit stitch, so I'm going to knit it. Okay, and just work uh, across this row using the yellow yarn. Okay, so I'm near the end of my row two with my yellow yarn, and the last stitch should be a purl stitch, cool. All right, so now I have successfully joined my yellow yarn into the scarf, how exciting. And now you can see that on the other side that we have the red yarn still attached to our scarf. So I'm gonna get my scissors out and just cut it off. I'm gonna leave like a yeah, five or six inch tail so that we can weave this in later on, just get that out of the way because now we are not knitting red. Now we are all about that yellow. Okay, so if we look at our pattern, it says continue knitting rows one to two with yellow yarn for three more rows. Okay, we are going to knit three more rows of one by one rib, slipping the first stitch, either knit wise or purl wise. And in total, we are going to work four rows of yellow. Here we go, I'm gonna work my row one, which is slipping one knit wise, and then purling, and then knitting. All right, so very simple. So go ahead and knit three more rows of yellow for a total of four rows. All right, so here's a little tip. When you are working your second row back over, you'll come across these stitches here where we held two strands of yarn together. And when you come across these stitches, just treat them as if they were normal stitches, okay? Just knit or purl into them as if they were just a regular old stitch. Doesn't matter that they are double thick. We don't discriminate. <laughs> knit them as if they were any other old stitch, okay? So I think I've knit four rows with the yellow yarn, but we can just confirm, okay? I don't have to just rely on my memory. We can just count up the rows. So let's take a look at the knit stitches here. I've got one, two, three, and the stitch on my needle is the fourth row. So I have indeed knit four rows with the yellow yarn. All right, so I'm just gonna work to my last stitch, and here we go, there we go, all right. So here's my last stitch, and I'm just going to use my right needle to push into the stitch on my left needle, and that would be a knit stitch. And I'm gonna get out my red yarn and leave like a five or six inch tail, and I'm just going to loop it onto my left needle, just like this, all right? And I'm gonna pull that through 
And there we go. So now my red yarn is attached to the last stitch and I'm going to turn my work over. And this should be quite familiar because we did this with our first yellow join. And I'm going to take my pair of scissors out and just cut off like a five or six inch tail. And then just get that yellow yarn out of the way because we're not doing yellow anymore. We're doing red. It's all about the red yarn now. All right, so we are on row two. So that means we are going to slip one purl wise. So I'm going to bring my needle behind my yarn here and just slip that first stitch off as if I were going to purl. Bring my yarn to the back because our next stitch is a knit stitch. And then with the two strands of red yarn held together, right, you can see there's two of them. Holding them together as if they were one, I'm going to knit into that second stitch, bring my yarn to the front, purl into the third stitch, okay? And we're just working one by one rib, okay? And I'm just gonna knit into like five stitches. So we've got one more we need to knit into. Here we go, cool. So now my red yarn tail has been woven into these stitches and I can just bring my scissor out again and just trim it off okay so like yeah that's basically fine okay and just get rid of that yarn tail and now i've just got one strand of yarn to work with and i can just knit um, the rest of my row in one by one rib now this portion here is called the red middle join if you look at our pattern and the red middle join is very similar to the first yellow join in that we knit four rows in total. Okay, so the first yellow join was four rows. The red middle join is also four rows. And the second yellow join is also four rows. Okay, so it's very even. Okay, so we're going to knit a total of four rows with the red and then we are going to join the yellow in. All right, so work four rows of red alternating between row one and row two and then meet me back here all right so i'm going to count up my red rows and see if i've done four so let's take a look here we've got one two three and this is four okay the stitches on my needle is my fourth row so cool i've done four rows of the middle red and now we are going to knit to the last stitch Cool, so I'm nearing the end of my middle red join here, and here's my last stitch. So at this point, you kind of know the drill, right? We are going to bring out the yellow yarn, here it is, leave like a five or six inch tail, and then just kind of loop it onto our right needle. Oops, okay, nope, I need to stick my right needle into that stitch, last stitch, as if to knit. And then I'm gonna bring in my yellow yarn, loop it onto my right needle, and then just pull it through. There we go, cool. So I'm gonna turn it over, and now we're going to work the second yellow join. So we're gonna bring our needle to the back, slip that first stitch over as if to purl, bring the two strands of yellow yarn over, and then knit. Okay, knit our second stitch, and basically just work one by one rib across uh, five stitches. Five stitches should be enough to really kind of weave in that tail end of our yellow yarn. And now I'm going to bring out my scissor, just snip off that yellow tail, and then also snip off the red from my, uh, from earlier, from the middle red join, something like that, cool. All right, and then just work four rows with the yellow yarn and that will complete our second yellow join all right so it's quite repetitive right we've got four rows of yellow another four rows of red and another four rows of yellow and then after that we are going to work a big block of red okay so after we finish this second yellow join we will basically have completed the repeat for this hogwarts scarf we would just repeat everything all over again All right, so I've done four rows of this yellow, the second yellow join, and here is my last stitch, and I'm gonna bring out my red here, leave a bit of a tail, and then just insert this needle in, wrap my uh, red yarn around my needle, just like this, and then pull it through. Cool, 
So now we are ready to work our red block join. All right, so the red block join is very, very simple. So what we're going to do is just begin working row two with our red yarn, both tail end and the working yarn held together. So we're going to slip one purl wise, bring the yarn to the back to work our knit stitch. Okay, and then just knit the first five stitches with the working yarn and the tail end of that same red yarn held together. At this point, you should be very comfortable and very familiar with this. Do one more, cool. And then we're gonna drop the tail yarn, pick up the working yarn and just knit the uh, rest of the row with the working yarn. All right, so if you look at our pattern, it says that we are going to knit this section until the piece measures four inches. So we have basically at this point completed the repeat for the Hogwarts scarf, okay? The repeat for this scarf is four inches of red, four rows of yellow, four rows of red, and four rows of yellow. And then we just repeat four inches of red, yellow, red, yellow. So if you look at your pattern, you'll see that it says that after we've done our red block, we'll repeat the instructions from first yellow join all the way to red block, okay? And we would repeat that section until the scarf measures 75.5 inches or your desired length, whatever that may be, okay? So that seems easy enough, right? We're basically knitting our four inch red block right now and then once you've done that, then you would work your first yellow join and on and on, okay? So knit until the scarf is the length that you want and then you would cast off, which we will do together. So when we cast off in pattern, what we're gonna do is knit the knits and purl the purls, okay? So very similar to what we've been doing. Normally when you cast off, you would just knit two stitches and then pass the first one over the second one. When we cast off in pattern, we basically uh, knit in the pattern that we've set. So in our case, it's purling the purls, knitting the knits, um, and then passing the first stitch over the second. All right, so let's get into it. Here we go. This is our first stitch, which was a slip stitch. So I'm just going to insert my needle as if I were to purl and then just slip it off my needle. Okay, and here's a purl stitch, so I'm gonna purl it. And then I'm gonna bring this first stitch here over the second stitch. Okay, here we go. So very similar to a cast off, there we go. Now our next stitch is a knit stitch, so I'm going to knit into it, okay? And then pass the first stitch over the second stitch. Here is a purl stitch next. So I'm gonna bring my yarn up front and purl into it. There we go, gonna bring the yarn back. And then I'm going to insert my needle into the first stitch and bring it over the second stitch. The next stitch is a knit stitch, so I'm going to knit into it, there we go pop it right off and bring the first stitch here over the second stitch, just, just leapfrogging over it. Next stitch is a purl stitch. So I'm gonna bring the yarn up front and purl into it. There we go. Bring the yarn to the back and then bring the first stitch over the second stitch and there we go. So as we cast off, you can see that there's a nice edge forming. It looks nice and neat. I'll insert a video here all about casting off in pattern if you want a little bit more detail. All right, so work your cast off until you get to the end of the row. All right, I'm nearing the last stitch of my cast off. Here's my last stitch. I'm going to knit into it, bring the first stitch over the second stitch, and cool. Now we are finished, or almost finished, our cast off. I'm going to bring out my scissors right here and I'll leave like a eh, five or six inch tail. And now I'm going to take this strand of yarn, bring it over the needle just like this. And then I'm going to bring the stitch on my needle over the loop that is now on my needle. Oopsie. Eh, grab it. And here we go. Cool. And then I'm just going to pull the yarn through and then tighten up and there we go. Now our scarf is off the needle. It has been fully cast off and it looks pretty 
pretty nice if, if I do say so myself. The edge is stretchy and it looks very neat on the top. Now that the scarf is off the needles, go ahead and wrap it around yourself, pretend that you're in Hogwarts, say some spells with feeling and admire your scarf. Next, we're gonna weave in those ends. First way that you can weave in your ends is what I would call the rib weaving in method. So this is great for weaving in the yarn tail from the red block join, that big red section of the scarf. It wouldn't work for weaving in tails from these smaller sections here. Okay, so what we're gonna do is just thread up your yarn tails like this, and then we're going to work into the knit columns uh, just directly above the yarn end, okay? So for instance, right here you can see we have a knit column, okay? And that's because we did a knit one, purl one rib along the entire fabric, right? So I can spread it apart and you can really see knit column, knit column, knit column, knit column, okay? So here we go, I'm gonna go into this knit column here and I'm gonna go into the right leg of the stitch, okay? So I'm going to go in from the back to the front, okay? So here we go, I'm gonna locate the knit column and I'm gonna go from the back to the front I'm gonna go find the next knit stitch above it and grab from the back to the front. So I'm grabbing the right leg of the knit stitch. So here we go, back to the front. The next stitch is right up here, back to the front. And at this point I've gone into one, two, three, four stitches and I'm quite happy with that. So I'm going to push the needle through and pull the yarn into those stitches. And you can see that it looks quite invisible. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so we've gone up the right leg of the knit column, and now we're gonna go back down into the left leg, okay? So when we go into the left leg, we're going from the front to the back. So here we go here, I think this is the corresponding left leg, so I'm gonna go from the front to the back. I'm gonna grab the next leg and go from the front to the back. And here we go, front to the back, and front to the back. So I'm gonna grab the yarn and pull it down. Great, so I'm gonna turn my scarf right side up again, and now I'm just going to pull the fabric so that the, uh, the yarn end is sort of evenly distributed through. It's not bunching up or anything, and I think that looks pretty good. I think it looks pretty invisible. Next, I'm gonna show you how to weave in like these guys. So the second way that you can weave in your ends is you can go horizontally across. So I'll show you how that works. We're gonna thread up our yellow yarn, and then I'm just gonna go underneath the knit stitch, okay? So you can see there's this little V shape, and I've just gone literally underneath it, cool and that kind of helps us camouflage the stitch. And now I'm going to go into the little purl bump between the two knit columns. And here it is, I've just picked it out. And I'm going to weave it in. Okay, and now I'm gonna go underneath that knit stitch again, just like this. There we go. And then find that purl in between the two knits. And there, yeah, there it is, I picked it out. Cool. All right, now we're gonna go underneath again. And then find that purl, just root around in there. Here we go, great. All right, perfect. Okay, so I've gone in like four or five times. You can go a little bit more if you like, um, it's totally up to you. I'm feeling a little lazy today, so I'm good here. So I'm gonna just snip off that little piece of yarn and just set it aside. And now I can see on both ends, both sides, it looks really nice. It looks invisible on the back side and on the front side. So I am happy with this uh, weaving in situation, okay? And you can do this with this red tail as well. We don't have a lot of red to weave it in vertically, so I could weave it in horizontally that way. Now let's talk about adding a fringe. All right, so I've got my scarf here and I just wanna add like a little fringe to my scarf on the edge here. So I've got my yarn out and you can decide whether you want like a really long fringe. So for example, like, I don't know, one that is, you know, the length of your index finger, okay? Or if you want like a really short fringe, I think both can look really cute and you can certainly experiment as well if you're not sure. 
So I think I want kind of a shortish fringe. I don't want a super long one. So I'm going to measure out um, a length of yarn that is about eight inches. So here we go, eight inches, and I'm gonna get out my scissors and just snip it off there, okay? So eight inches, I'm gonna fold it in half and my fringe is going to be roughly this length, okay? So I'm kind of eyeballing it and I think it looks pretty good, pretty decent, okay? So we need to make this fringe a little bit fatter. It looks kind of sad if it's two strands just hanging there. So I'm going to measure out another length that is roughly the same length and we can always trim this a bit later and I'm gonna do it again a third time. So I've got three strands of yarn and I'm gonna just fold it in half like this. And let's take a look and that looks pretty good. All right, pretty good, pretty full, pretty plentiful. So let's attach it to our scarf now. So I'm gonna fold it roughly in half. That's roughly half, cool. All right, now I'm gonna get a needle involved in order to attach this to my scarf. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start at this corner here, and I'm just going to stick my needle into the cornerest corner, okay? Just the farthest point of this corner, which is where I wanna attach my fringe. And now I'm going to take my fringe and just loop it around the needle, okay? And I'm going to just kind of pull it tight almost like making a slingshot out of it. And now I'm gonna try to pull these yarn strands through to the other side of my scarf, all right? So I'm gonna go like this, bam. All right, I think I've got all three strands and I have, perfect. So I've pulled the strands over to the other side of the scarf, as you can see. And now I'm gonna drop my needle, bring the tail ends of the fringe into the loop that I've made. Here we go. And then just pull tight and there you go. Now you can see that I have attached the fringe to my scarf, right, right at the edge. It looks nice and neat. All right, so we're gonna do the whole process again. I'm gonna measure out an eight inch length of yarn, like around here, okay? And then just snip it off, cool. And then measure out another three strands of yarn that are roughly the same measurement. Great, so now I've got three strands of yarn and I'm going to fold it in half like this. Before we attach our second fringe, I wanna draw your attention to fringe placement, okay? So when you take a look at the first fringe, you'll notice that on one side, the fringe is sort of attached with this kind of like a band of yarn across the fringe here, right? It looks kind of neat. It's almost like a little bubble of yarn that comes out. And when I turn it over, you'll see that it doesn't look the same on the other side, right? On the other side, it's almost like, you know, two strands of yarn on either side of the fringe. So you've got two different sides to how the fringe is attached. What we want is for our fringe to be attached on our scarf all in the same direction, okay? So I want this fringe to also be attached to my yarn with this sort of band bubble, okay, on this side instead of on this side, right? I want some level of uniformity to how my fringe is attached. So next I'm gonna show you how to do that. All right, so I kind of like to think of this side of the fringe as being the right side uh, because I just like that strand of yarn kind of running across the fringe. I think it looks really neat. So I'm just gonna refer to this as the right side of the fringe. Okay, so in order to attach our second fringe in the same manner, I'm gonna take my needle and just kind of move it, eh, like, I don't know, like a quarter of an inch, half an inch over from my fringe, my first fringe, and I'm gonna poke the needle into my scarf like this, okay? So that the pointy part of the needle is poking up through to the right side of the fringe. Okay, now I'm gonna take my second fringe, wrap it around the needle. Yeah, did I got it? Yes, I did. Wrap it around the needle, pull it tight, right? Like this. And now I'm gonna try and draw it through. Yes, to the other side, great. All right, so now I've got the loop coming out from the wrong side of my scarf. All right, and now I'm just going to throw it into the loop, throw the fringe into the loop, grab it from the other side, and then pull 
and there we go. So our second fringe has been attached and you can see that it's been attached properly. The stranded part of the fringe is on the right side along with the first fringe, it's even. So let's do this again. Let's measure out some yarn and attach our third fringe. I've got my third fringe here, so let's attach it to the scarf. So I'm going to poke my needle in like about eh, a tiny bit over, like a quarter of an inch over, maybe a tiny bit more like that. Poke my needle into the right side of my scarf. I'm going to grab my fringe and just hook it onto my needle. And I'm going to hold it tightly against my needle so that I can pull it through to the other side. There we go. Okay, pull it through. There we go. I've got a little loopy loop. And now I'm going to take my fringe and just stuff it into that hole. Okay, here we go. Yes, yes. And then pull it down. And there we go. My third fringe has been attached to my scarf. All right, so I'm nearing the end of my edge here. So I'm just going to poke my needle into right at the very edge here, as close to the edge as I could get. Loop it around the needle, pull the yarn through. All right, now I've got a loop, grab the fringe, pull it through the loop, yes. And there we go, I have just attached my last fringe onto my scarf. It's right up flush against the edge, which is perfect. And now my fringe is fully attached to my scarf. I mean, look at it, it's so cute and like swingy and adorable. So I'm looking at it right now and I can see that all of the fringe placement is correct. I don't think that was proper grammar, but whatever. <laughs> okay, these little, um, the strand of yarn side of the fringe is all facing upwards. It's all very neat, like soldiers in a row. When I flip it over, you can see that the placement is correct on the back as well. So if we take a look at our fringe again, you can see that it's not super even, right? Like some areas are a bit longer, some areas are a bit shorter, it looks a little bit raggedy, it's not neat. So we are going to trim the fringe so that it is as close to perfectly straight as we can get it. So I'm gonna just go through each fringe section, pull it tight, all right, so now I'm gonna get out the sharpest pair of scissors I can find. This is very important. If you have dull scissors, this next part is gonna go disastrously. So make sure you have very sharp scissors. Snip, snip. Now, what I'm gonna do is actually use my floor or my floorboards here. You can see this line. I'm actually just gonna move it over the fringe or the shortest part of my fringe. So this is probably the shortest fringe I can find. I'm gonna make sure it's right over that line in my floorboard. If you don't have a floorboard, that's okay. Um, you can use like a sheet of paper or something and just slide it under your, uh, your fringe. Or you can live dangerously and just eyeball it, which is what I used to do all the time. All right, so I've got my fringe sort of lined up as straightly as I can. So here we go, I'm just going to snip, 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 oh my gosh, snip, 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 snip. I don't know why I'm giving you like a soundtrack, but there we go, and snip. Ooh, moment of truth. So let's get this bits out of the way. I think it looks pretty nice, if I do say so myself. It looks pretty even and quite straight. I noticed that this edge is a little bit longer, so I'm going to, again, just do a little bit of a snippy snip. Okay, get that out of the way. And I think that looks pretty good, if I do say so myself. I think it looks pretty great, actually. If you're wondering how I was able to get it so straight, I literally just slid my needle along the groove of my floorboard and just moved it. Snip, 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 just like that, okay? Um, that's how I got it so straight. So that is how you attach a fringe to your scarf. So the fun isn't over. I've got a little surprise here. This little package I got off of Etsy. So let's open it up, shall we? That's my terrible British accent there for you. And uh, let's just open it up here. A little bit of a mystery. <laughs> a patch, a Gryffindor patch. So I got this off of Etsy. Etsy has tons and tons of these types of patches. 
I actually don't know if this is an iron on, but even if it is, I would not want to iron this onto my scarf because I don't like the idea of putting glue on my scarf. What I would do is place this patch right on my scarf, just like this. Yeah, why am I talking with the Southern accent? I'm all over the place. I would place it right on my scarf like this and sew it around the edge of the patch just to keep it in place. I think it just adds like a really cute officialness to the scarf. So I'll throw a link to this patch down in the description if you want to get something similar. So there we go. This is my finishing touch on my Hogwarts scarf. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, then please give it a big thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos like this one, then subscribe and ring that bell to be notified of new videos. Let me know in the comments what Hogwarts house scarf you'll be knitting. Are you a Gryffindor, a Ravenclaw, a Hufflepuff, or a Slytherin? Or maybe you'll knit a combo scarf. Hmm. I'm Davina, a proud Ravenclaw from SheepAndStitch.com. Thanks for watching, happy knitting, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!